What is up? It's your boy Johnny Shreve. I have BB promos to tell like it is. Welcome back to another episode of Coaching Up. Today I'm coaching up Isaiah Miranda. He's doing today heavy squats, testing my one rep max. So last time I did a coaching rep with Isaiah Miranda, I think it was like 100 something thousand subscribers. Now he's at 260-ish thousand plus subscribers. That means there's a new viewers watching some things here that I gotta correct and I guarantee there's people watching this video right now that need their squat form corrected. You can never go over squat form enough. I gotta, I'm gonna be doing this until I'm blue in the face until I have everybody squatting optimally. So we got Isaiah in his screenshot here. Isaiah's got a really good base. Right now you're looking at this, basically this line here represents basically where the bars are on the center of mass. So right now his center of mass, this is your center of mass right here, where you can see where the bar is coming straight down over his bars here, the weights here, the load, that force load is right here. There's your center of mass, your brace, that shoulder depression, the glutes and hamstrings are tight. Everything here is good. This is a very good looking squat. Now, we want to continue this as we go. Again, when we're looking at the squat, we wanna make sure that those, you know, we're externally rotating the hips so those knees stay outward. Not necessarily outward, but staying right over the toes, in line with the toes. And then keeping that bar here on the back is great because again, when it comes to a harder set, it's not as low, but it's a good position here. It's not right on his, tra on his high trap because if the bar was right here, he'd have an issue, right? So this set is pretty good. Now, looking at his buddy, you can just see when he's squatting, knees are being pushed forward. The guy's got some good dorsal flexion because even at the bottom here, we don't have his heels coming up. He's wearing some pretty flat shoes, so good job for him. But again, I can tell his knees are kind of caving a little bit and that posture here is not good. But when we're looking at this in terms of his center of mass, I know we're on a little bit of a side angle here. Grab this bar where it is, and that bar is pretty low on his back, and it's right by his butt. Now, if we were on the side more, so if we're right here on the side, if you look right over the bar is, here's the bar on his back, going right through, and going straight up. This is not bad. Now, I would make sure that head stays a little forward because I'm gonna show you a couple things when it comes to his posture. We got this thing called basically like your proper shin angle. Basically, the toe, knee, and chin should kind of be aligned when it looks at, in terms of where his feet are. So you look at this right here, toe, knee, and chin, not necessarily. We got toe and knee, but the chin's kind of back this way and his head's over more. So his head, in a sense, really isn't in an optimal spot and the heavier it gets, I can guarantee the form's gonna go off a little bit. Either way, let's move on to the next. So I want you guys to see, do not and stop, all of you, before we have another ridiculous gym fail of somebody hyperextending their back and then breaking it. Hips forward, right? Going down and we got this hip forward type drive. We don't want that. Here we go again. Don't smash the hips forward, but this is a good looking squat. Let's pause this down a bit again. So let's go over this again when it comes to that snapshot. So if you look at this again, we're looking at our center of mass. We're doing a pretty good job. This is a good squat. This is a weight that I would say in a few, if you look at this right now, we're looking at absolutely great activation everywhere. At this bottom here, you have a straight spine. His hamstrings are, are just on. They are on working. Glutes are on. We got a great amount of hip and knee flexion here, right? This is really good. Our center of mass is really good too. Right here, there's an area. We're in a good position. If we look at this right here, look over and bring these over like this. Knee, toe, knee, toe, chin. Now we're getting up a little, little bit higher here. We're starting to lose a bit, but as long as we got that weight here, we're good. Everybody's not built the same, so we're not gonna always get that exact same angle on everybody else. But we're looking at this, that center mass is great, it's there, we're in a good position. I would say go up another 20 pounds total. And in going little increments of like, you know, 10, maybe five or 10 pounds, only up to 20 pounds. This is a good looking set. Whoa, guys, check it out. A lot of you guys are watching my videos but not subscribed, so do your boy a favor and subscribe to the channel. I'll just hit that post notification button so the next time I put a video, you'll be the first ones to get it. And guys, hopefully by now you like the video. So if you do, hit the like button. Back to the show. Good, go, go, one more, one more. Hips are going back first, and then we're stopping it here. Now, look at the position we're in right now. 
this is not a good position. Now let's give a little screenshot here. Let's pop on over. And here we go. Here's our center of mass. If you look at it, our center of mass is actually back here. Right away, again, we're looking at it. We can tell that her knee, her, her head is way over her knee. Her toes, if you look at it right now, right, we're getting, what most people do is they mix up the hinge and the squat. So we had her hinging first, her butt came back first before her knees went out, and that creates this little bit of not much shin here. Now she's got some long fibia, long femur, and her torso looks pretty short. So you're gonna get a little bit of this leaning over. Again, when it comes to it, make sure we're using the weight that we can do because this right here is not gonna go up optimal whatsoever. I can guarantee it. Let's go back and watch this set. Let's watch it go up. Go, 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 one more, one more. Right here, then we get again, and then that weight is going up first. Look at her knees. Look at everything's moving. As soon as it gets hard, remember that center mass is over her back. It's over her knees more. That bar's over here, her butt's back here. What's gonna happen? The butt's gonna fly up first. This bar is not gonna do anything but kind of stay in this position while your butt goes up. And then all of a sudden you're starting to lean forward. Your knees start to cave in to try and protect itself because your body's saying fight or flight is saying flight, run, squeeze in, find a way to get this thing up. And then you have this whole bend over thing and their back's tilting and you have a bad back at the end of this. Every rep got a little better. Every rep did not get better, Isaiah. No, don't let the chest fall like that at all. So. Knee valgus, right? This guy's strong and he's getting away with a lot of things because he's strong, right? But we want to make sure we don't have that knee valgus, his knees bumping in. Hard to wait. And there you go. Go back to that again. Here we have what I see in the gym all the time when everybody's trying to do heavy squats. This is how we get gym fails, right, guys? Let's check this out over here. Again, let's look at Isaiah's positioning. At his hardest part, we have his back, his chest is going down. His knees are coming in right away. His butt's going up. He doesn't have to control his weight. He jumped from two plates, which he had a really, really good squat, and he put on 50 extra pounds. 50 extra pounds a lot. He could have just done half of that and been great. That 50 extra pounds he cannot control. He's a strong kid, right? I'm gonna coach him up another time. We're gonna get on this guy, but he's still, again, we want the knee valgus away. External rotation of the hips. Now he's got 315. Now, so we just had 300, we just had 275 on the bar. 225 was good rep. Everything was good about that rep. 275 looks wonky. That looked like his one rep max. Literally, that looked like something that's gonna be pretty hard for him to do. Now he's jumping up again, putting on three plates, and he doesn't. He, let's see how this goes. And done. Bad. That is how you get injured. Let's go over the chalkboard again. 315, if you look at this one, his knees, he has a little bit of knee valgus coming in. He can squeeze a little bit there to protect him on the way up. That's at 275. At 315, we have his knees completely caved in. His center of mass is all the way back here. His chest is way further over. That bar is gonna go forward. And guess what, guys? There is no safety rack. So guess what? If this guy's not a good spotter, he's screwed. Luckily, he's a good spotter. The only thing that's going to protect him are these weights sitting at the bottom here that I don't know what the fuck that's going to do. But eventually, I mean, if you're going to be down there putting weights there, might as well put a freaking safety rack there in the first place. Be safe. Now let's check this out. Watch the rest of his squat. Now big up on the spotter. The spotter is good. Look, wraps him in the hips, helps him up, pushes him back up. And then here we go again at the end of this, guys. Please, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, we're gonna go over all this. The whole re-racking it, have to do a calf raise or rack your weight back on, you're just asking to hurt yourself. All right, guys, let's go over to the rack. I'm gonna show you guys how to actually squat properly. Watch extremely, watch this video. I'm gonna go over to the extreme basics so you guys understand how to proper back squat with a bar. Before you get started squatting, I'm gonna go over a few things that are gonna affect your ability to squat immensely from the ground up. Number one, dorsal flexion. And I'm not saying this like in terms of like priority wise, but dorsal flexion, your tibia, femur, and torso length, um, your overall mobility, all those things are gonna play a big part in how good you can squat right away. Now, when it comes to what you can control right now, that is making sure that we have that bar in a place to keep over a center of mass. Now to make sure that we're in a good position, some things we can check out 
right now to see what we need to do right away. Instead of wasting time finding out we got to make these changes on the road, let's make these changes right now. So number one, dorsal flexion. Reason most of the time our heels come off the ground is the flexion in our ankles, right? Dorsal flexion is when your foot comes basically like this way. We look at it. Plantar flexion is this. Now, dorsal flexion here, when, I, when I'm posted up, when I'm squatting, going down and going down, and then all of a sudden I don't have that much flexibility here, we get the, this kind of thing coming off the ground, right? That's due to a couple things, ankle mobility and also tibia length. So a couple of things we can do to see, you know, where we're at right now. Like, do I need to elevate my heels in a sense? Well, we can do this right now. So a couple of things you want to do, just take like your hand um, width, put it on a wall or by the bar. So you're about, I'm about like this. So right here, I would say is where it is. I'm going to put my big toe right there and then I'm going to see how close my knee can come to this. This could be a wall or a rack without my heel coming off the ground. So we're going to sit here. We're just going to press it forward and see how much I get. Now, here you go. My heel is still on the ground. A couple of things can really affect this is also like if you've injured your ankle a lot, we got some soft tissue issues. I do have a sprained ankle more than a couple of times. I actually sprained my ankle this weekend snowboarding. So even right here, it's congested a little bit and it's affecting how much I get, but I still get a good enough amount where I got a good knee over toe. We can check the other foot pressing forward and you can see there's a little bit more than the other side. If you're looking at it, right? My knees aligned. I get a little bit more depth. Now we want to continue doing this until we can get our knee closer and closer and closer to the wall. That's going to give you guys a lot more mobility in your ankles when we're trying to squat. So right away, if you're like get here and your knees are not going any closer right away, I'm going to say, make sure we elevate those heels. Cause what happens when we elevate the heel, we give ourselves a little bit more mobility to be able to go over the toe. Right. And what that elevation, of the heel is, it basically, lengthens your tibia. If you have short tibias or, you know, ankle ability, just, just elevating your heel a little bit with say squat shoes, or we have these cool things here. You can buy basically like this. If you look, if I do this, look how much more I get, right? Just from doing that. I take that away, put my heel down and look how much it comes back. So right away, there's benefit of using a wedge, squat shoes so i definitely strongly suggest doing so hey guys just for you to know a lot of things we talk about i actually break down even further in my free training series that you can find in the description below i go over the most common mistakes that people are doing today right now in the gym so guys hit the description below and get part of that free training series now back to the show okay so i was kind of touching in about your proper shin angle or your center of mass when we're squatting that proper shin angle for like most part in terms of like if you're doing functional moving doing cutting and everything else when you make a cut or move or into like a split squat move here, if I'm say cutting or change direction one side to side, there is that level of Tony chin that will keep me at an angle where I'm still athletic and I can move. Same with squatting. If I'm squatting Tony chin, if I'm here, right, I'm in a good position. If I decide to make my head move back a little bit, I'm just gonna do like, I'm just gonna do this. Just doing this is making me move further back further. If I do this forward like this, I'm gonna start moving forward. Now imagine me putting a load on my back. My load's up here on our neck. I'm squatting down and I lose this and then this starts to happen. My knees will buckle in and then I'm trying to get the weight up because my butt's going to push up to get the weight and then I got to get the rest of my weight up this way. We want to make sure that that weight does as much as we can stays over that center of mass. So when I'm squatting down again, we're looking at the bar pathway is getting here in a position where everything's aligned. So that weight stays over top of this part of my body. If I move that weight this way, it's gonna shift everything this way, and then we have issues, either going forward or going backwards, right? Now, after we got that clear when it comes to our dose flexion ankles, we're gonna go over a checklist. Always go over this checklist. From the ground up, where is our width in our feet? It's dependent on your mobility. Everyone's gonna be different, but we don't wanna be up in a sumo position trying to compensate because again, the further away we go, the less external rotation we can get to really put that load on our glutes and be optimal with that knee over toe, right? So getting a nice place of, you know, I always say you're with your feet should be the same way as when you sit on a toilet. No one thinks about their width of their feet when they sit on a toilet. They just kind of sit down like, you gotta go to the washroom, bam and they're sitting down, they don't think about it. No one's sitting there being like, uh, 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 and then getting down. You gotta go to the washroom, 
You're just you slipping that off, you're, and you're after all of this shit. I gotta go, and then boom, you just sit down and you're on the toilet, or like you're doing the same thing. Like if you're, I don't know, in a public washroom and you're not trying to touch that nasty ass toilet, and you got it all, you know, nested up with toilet paper and all that shit, and you're just like, nah, I ain't touching that, and you kind of do this, and you sit down and you're hovering over it. You're already squatting. You're doing things you're already doing in your life naturally in a sense, but again, to make it more optimal, we gotta make sure that the rest of the torso here is in alignment as well too. So before we actually start our squatting, we're gonna look at with the feet natural, maybe a little bit outside, shoulder width apart. Our toes pointing, let's take, let's make it easy. 11 o'clock and one o'clock. If your crotch is the, is your crotch is 12 o'clock, we're looking at here's 11, here's one. We don't wanna be at like nine and three because this makes no sense. We're not doing plies, right? We're not looking at 10 and two either. That's too much. The further away our feet are, in terms of them being more in the duck position, the less external rotation we have, which brings me next to external rotation. When our feet are here, in position, external rotation, the point of external rotation is align my knee with my toe. Right now, here's my knee and is going straight down here. It's inside of my toe. If I externally rotate the hips, a little bit, just doing this, opening up. Now, they're aligned with my toes. So when I squat, they're gonna stay there. Now, when I say externally rotate, I don't mean pull your knees out and continue so you're doing this, your knees start doing that. All I'm saying is, is to externally rotate until your knees are aligned with your toes and keep yourself activated so it stays there. You're going to force the load onto your glutes. Most external rotation comes from your glutes. You wanna walk this way, bam, glutes are working. That's your glutes, right? That's the job of a glutes to do this. So if we do this right away, we're already putting that load on your glutes. Give it a try, all right at home, just do this and start squatting, right? Now, once we're there, I always just say, hips and knees are breaking at the same time. Don't try to do the hinge and then knees, right? We always get this kind of thing where we're here and we're squatting first and then chest goes down first, butt goes back, and then knees are going down, we're doing this kind of thing. We're not doing that. We're not doing some weird, wonky, good morning looking thing and this, right? You do it with heavy ass weight, you're gonna do it like this and you're like, oh, boom, and then you're dead, right? Probably not dead, but just injured and you look like an idiot in the gym. So from here, hips and knees are gonna bend at the same time. I had to kind of make this kind of position here where I'm basically like hips and knees. Knees are going this way, hips are going this way at the same time, right? Let your knees break and your hips break at the same time and they're gonna naturally go down at the same time and control the weight going down. And then back up. Pushing from this part of your foot, still gripping with the toes, don't push from your heels, push from the entire foot. Now we do want a level of anterior pelvic tilt, a level of it, not too much, we're not trying to torque. The reason why I got back problems is because I did too much of this and I didn't engage this, so when I squatted, I take this big breath, and then this entire load sitting on my lower back and I'm squatting and doing this and now I have deteriorating vertebrae. That's why I'm telling you guys this stuff right now because I'm the one who's going through all the pain from the past mistakes. I'm trying to help you guys avoid all that shit. A little level of anterior pelvic tilt, but engaging the core. I don't mean suck the core in, I mean push into the core. Like you gotta take a crap again. We're trying to push it out, we're constipated. We're trying to <laughs> You don't know when some suckers can come on you and suck punch you in the stomach. We want to be always eh, ready for someone to punch us in the stomach or squeeze out a piece of doo-doo. I don't know. Either way, whatever you can kind of resonate with, just make sure you're tensing the core and not trying to do a vacuum. We're not trying to do a vacuum when we're freaking doing a squat. You want to do a vacuum when you do a squat, good way to smash your lower back. Anyway, now we're at that position here at the top again, whether we're doing a goblet squat, a back squat, a front squat, our shoulders will be depressed. Think about pushing your shoulders away from, back and away from your ears. I didn't say scap retraction, I said push your shoulders back and away from your ears. That is shoulder depression. Or think about pushing your hands to the ground. If my elbows are up here when we're squatting, then push your elbows to the ground. That's gonna keep this torso stabilized. So when we're squatting, we don't have coming down here and then our back kinda does this, we got this roll thing, we're doing this. Right, because from the waist down, this is a great squat. On the way up, from the waist down, this is still a great squat, but our back is doing this. And then we're, ugh. So torso, torso engaged. So again, feet at a little bit outside shoulder width apart. 
Toes at 11 o'clock and one o'clock. Externally rotating the hips to make sure knees align with our toes. A little bit of anterior pelvic tilt while engaging the core, pushing into it to keep our lower back safe and engaged with our core. Then we're gonna externally rotate at the hips and then we're gonna use shoulder to press and we're gonna squat. And if you see me squat from the side, here's my squat. We have a flat back, Tony chin, center of mass. I'm gonna get a position here and even here. If you wanna see how good you are squatting, put your hands up like this and squat and you should be able to keep your chest necessarily up like this. Now again, I'm wearing squat shoes and I have good dorsal flexion. There's nothing wrong with wearing squat shoes. Do it until you're comfortable with not having to wear them, but you can wear them every single time you squat if you have to. That's why they have these. That's why they have wraps. That's why they have wedges. That's why they have belts to help aid your lifts, not to replace activation, but to aid it. Anyway, now when it comes to your rack, we don't want to finish squatting and then have to do a calf raise to put it back on. We want to be able to get underneath the bar and just be able to extend the knees a slight bit. So think about having the rack stand next to it and having it right there at the bottom of the shoulder. Cause I know that bar is gonna be at that part of my back. Hey guys, check it out. A lot of what I've talked about right now, I go over in depth with my clients and my athletes on a day to day, week to week basis. We go over film study to make sure they're doing the form properly. So if you wanna get involved guys, hit the description below. Also grab an ebook, a lot of information there to help you optimize your squats as well as this video. Back to the show. I'm going to grab my bar Sit underneath, and then from here, right, I'm engaged. Don't sit like this and try to lift the weight up. Right away, my center of mass is underneath even to lift the weight up. From here, I'm just gonna stand up, and I've cleared the rack. Again, we wanna grab the bar, make sure we're even. Make sure we can see this little rough part here, or maybe have a small one, doesn't really matter, but get your hands where they should be first, so that when we go underneath, we are already aligned with this. So we can step underneath, get underneath, and then standing up. And we're gonna take a couple steps back. One, two. Find your feet, and then from here, chest up, tight core, lats engaged, externally rotated, feet, are to feet and toes, shoulder width apart, 10, 11 o'clock and one o'clock, externally rotate a little bit, interior pelvic tilt with my core engaged, lats engaged, and from here, I go into squat. And from here, I am aligned. I can sit here all day long. This is a great squat from here, head's looking right in the bar, right in, and we're coming right back up. If you see again, my hips and my knees are breaking at the same time. We are here. And then we're up. We're not dropping and catching, we're lowering by being activated. From here, my glutes are tight, my back is nice and straight, and whoosh, pushing up. And then we walk back, and the weight's there. Walking up to the bar, find my hand positioning, make sure I'm aligned, make sure the bar is aligned. Find my position, I'm gonna walk right underneath the bar. Gonna find my position with the bar, I'm gonna get underneath the bar, and then I'm gonna just stand right up. Take a couple steps back, get a couple seconds to find your feet. Show with the part, toes at one o'clock, 11 o'clock, sternly rotated at the hips, anterior pelvic tilt a little bit, engaging the core, shoulder pressure, chest up, Big breath in, down, and then we're pressing back up. Let's do it again. Step back, and then, and we're done. Take that tutorial, guys, be in your head, watch it over and over and over again. You're gonna do squats, Watch it. You're gonna do legs, watch it. Just keep watching that. The same rules are gonna apply when you're doing front squats, back squats, goblet squats, whatever you're doing. Everything's gonna be the exact same, but just how you hold the weight. Activation is the exact same. Anyway, guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and share. You know, become what that talk it is transparent, vulnerable truth. And for coaching, johnashi.com, guys, if you wanna know about coaching, Book yourself a phone consult, 15 to 30 minutes. At the end of the phone consult, if you want to go with coaching, I deduct it off any package that you pick. Also, guys, hit the description below for all those discount codes and promo codes to help save your life or change your life for the better. And guys, add me on Instagram and TikTok. Send me your progress pics, your training pics, and your video clips, and I'll repose it for you because you know what it is. Iron Sharp Iron, progressive overload your life. In the meantime, keep dream chasing. Peace.